uh, and they were also really committed to peace. Uh, but unfortunately, some things happened uh, in the future that sort of seems rather undemocratic. On July 19th, uh, Ram Yadav is elected to president by Narendra Mahajan. He's the uh, Nepali Congress candidate. The Maoists were kind of working with the UML to get their president installed. The president is kind of like an empty, stuffed shirt in their country for what the king used to be. And it's got seriously limited powers and things like that. The prime minister is the, the holder of the, of the keys to the city, as it were. Um, in August 15th, Pran Chanda, he was the chairman of the CPNM, becomes elected as the head of government as prime minister. Um, on May 9, 2009, Prachanda resigns when the president reinstates the general to the National Army after Prachanda dismisses him for holding up the integration of the people's liberation to the National Army, which was uh, um, part of the whole peace agreement. The whole thing of, all right, we're going to stop attacking, we're going to do the democratic peace thing, was, okay, but this royalist army that was fighting us the entire time, even though they're just as poor and can't seem to be converted or anything like this, needed to be integrated. As a part of that, the person was upholding it. Pranchanda fired him. The president is legally constituted, ably, is able to reinstate the person does. So even though it violates the peace treaty, the very conditions under which war stops, he's able to do this. And of course, it's ratified by the courts. And that's when uh, Pranchanda resigns. So the rest of the people that weren't democratically elect a majority form a new government. This is a parliamentary system. It's a little bit different than this next point later. Uh, since this time, the Maoists and other sympathetic peoples all over Nepal have been holding regular strikes and protests that prevent the sitting of minority coalition parliament from convening. Sometimes tens of thousands of people show up, uh, you know, people show up daily, but sometimes you can get up to even tens of thousands on a regular basis and blockade the assembly, uh, blockade the assembly hall, which is where the CA meets. Uh, many of these protests have occurred without violence. November 23rd, the Mouse call three days stopped the protest, allowing the Pali Parliament to convene three days, it's an emergency budget, this sort of thing, basically like we can feed government workers and things like this. Um, October 9th, the Mouse meet with the Nepali Congress and the UML and demand that they restore civilian supremacy over military supremacy in the presidency. Um, and want the resignation of the Prime Minister. Two days uh, in November 2009, two days after Branchanda announces a deal with the Nepali Congress, Fiorola, who's a somewhat notable, venerable figure who was basically Prime Minister when the King was around, but you know, that still doesn't make anybody hate you at all. Uh, behind closed doors, they say that they have a, a sort of peace deal worked out. The deal being that Kiarolo becomes the new president and that they form a new government with obviously the duly elected majority um, from Chanda being the prime minister. Sorry, I'm like running out of breath here. Um, the explanation is that the Nepali Congress uh, backed out of the deal because, you know, they were going to lose too much in it. December 12, 2009, the CPN Maoists uh, declared two more autonomous states. Prime Minister Nepal, who's his name is Nepal, but also he's the Prime Minister of Nepal. I know it's confusing, but it's the minority governments. Uh, anyway, uh, they instruct the Maoists that further liberation of these states um, will cause political configuration and untimely writing of the Constitution, which of course is not written to this day, is not completed, I should say. So the big story here is that um, a big issue in Nepal is federalism, and these sort of states want more autonomous control, and it's because it's extremely racially mixed. There's something like, I don't know, like 23 or 47 ethnic groups are in, you know, times two languages, and this sort of thing, and so people want a little bit more control. Basically, the Maoists, as far as I'm concerned, are liberating these regions only to form them back up. But the reason is to restore civilian supremacy. These places did vote Maoists in, and basically they were like, okay, this is uh, liberated, and they're taking big chunks out of Nepal, and uh, the people that are the illegitimate government holders are very upset about that, and they're 
are saying, stop, politics is going to stop. It's like, the mouse is pretty much like, you already stopped politics. Um, on the 18th, the mouse complete deliberation, the 13th autonomous state, claiming that it was in order better to uphold civilian supremacy. And my very last point, you don't need to plot now. Uh, December 20th is that the Maoist <coughs> leader general strike at cripples Nepal, giving the ultimatum that the government needs to set up a new national government by the 24th of January, which is now past us. 70 persons were arrested, and the use of tear gas and batons were used to prevent demonstrators from blocking Prime Minister Nepal entry into his own house after returning from the airport of a climate change conference, which apparently you can attend if your entire country is in an emergency. And the addition to the police suppression, two of the people's protest, which the Maoist claim was a peaceful protest, this is doable at least a little ways, but two people in parliament members were uh, rioting or uh, protesting with them were badly injured as well. So that's the current state of Nepal. Hold on. There we go. Um, that's the current state of Nepal. Right now, things aren't moving too much in it, but something is going to be happening on the 10th of March, which is when the Constitution is supposed to be finished. And if the government's insolvent, essentially, because they're undemocratic, nobody knows what's going to happen. So, you know, I, I won't even pretend to do this, but of course I know that the, the mouse have a lot of support here. So anyway, that is uh, some of the, the people's resistances and struggles in Nepal. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm willing to take them. And that's it for my presentation.